Education in Emergency Working Group is chaired by the Federal Minister of Education at the federal level, Abuja level. And in base states, in the three states, Yobe, Adamawa, and Borno, we have uh, the EI Working Group that is chaired by the Minister of Education or the SUBEBS at the state level. And we have many ways to support Nigeria government in terms of uh, uh, safe school declaration commitment. We have been uh, in several countries where we develop and we support the government to domesticate the safe school declaration. And here in Nigeria, we are working with the federal minister. We have been supporting the federal minister in terms of domestication of the SSD safe school declaration in Nigeria from the policy level up to the implementation level. In the last 12 years or so, we are grappled with this particular carnage and destruction. And the sub-target of Boko Haram has been the schools, students, teachers, structures. Rising attacks on schools and students over the last few years have meant school closures. This has made it increasingly difficult for girls like me to get an education. We know that when we talk about attack, especially when here in Nigeria, that most of the attacks happen in secondary schools. The safe school declaration is in conformity with law of armed conflict, otherwise known as um, international humanitarian law, which of course guide the operation of the Nigerian military. It is very important that adolescent girls are protected in schools from attack because once attack takes place, they find it very difficult to go back to school. So plan by joining the secondary education working group and even being a member or active member of the education emergency working group here in Nigeria is to ensure that adolescent girls who have uh, reintegrated back to school are retained and complete their secondary education. I was living in Goza local government happily with my family. I play freely, go to school daily. Because of crisis, I was staying at home about three to four years. I'm not going to school because our school has become military base. Crisis affected my education in so many ways. It made me to be very weak and poor in terms of reading, writing, counting, and speaking English. I want to be a medical doctor so as to be helping people when they are sick in my community. Many of us have experienced being attacked. Those who did survive had to move area, causing millions of us to be out of school. Friends and family have been pushed into poverty, and coronavirus has made things worse. Adolescent uh, girls in secondary school, they are particularly very vulnerable when not in school to early marriage and um, early pregnancy. In the wake of that crisis, 512 schools in the state being devastated. When you translate that to classrooms, we have 2,436 classrooms. Worse also, well over 500 of our teachers were either lynched or missing. I know students and teachers who have been killed or kidnapped. We are all afraid to go back to school. We all need to be protected and supported. We develop, of course, a tool, a monitoring tool. It's a technical tool, but also an easy one that is very easy to report a case of attack against education, attack against school, attacks against teachers. The Nigeria military protects school from attack uh, by conducting a uh, critical meeting with stakeholders, such as community leaders, sensitizing them to their role in securing the environment, including schools. They even go to the extent of uh, training some community elements in some basic security skills 
on how to support security. The impressive performance of Nigerian military intelligence in the Northeast enabled me to relocate Command Secondary School boys, Hauno, to Meduguri, and Command Secondary School girls, Meninga, to Biu, uh, to forestall imminent Boko Haram attack at that time. In 2015, the headquarters of Nigerian Army authorized deployment of military teachers to IDP camp schools to support education continuity of IDP children. If I am able to attend secondary school, I will be able to fulfill my dream of becoming a doctor. But I need support from my family, my school, my community and the government. I need to stay in school. When the self-school initiative being introduced, upon signing that particular uh, protocol, Borno state government uh, was alive to its responsibility. We felt that there is need for us to fence our schools. We made it almost a policy in the state that each school would have a borehole. We try to see that most of the girls that are on their, their schools are from within the metropolis. Two years ago, Nigeria did not have any law in terms of protection of schools. And now we have a policy, a frame, in which now justice can come and start its work. And I hope in the coming years, we'll have some cases because uh, in, uh, in 2021 already, we have more than six attacks that have, uh, we have experienced since January. So uh, I believe that in the coming years, we'll have something, but for now, I'm not aware myself about any legal process or arrest of uh, people who are doing this kind of attack against uh, education and learning space. At school, I want to be given health information and to be supported with safer transport. I also want my teachers and classmates to be protected. Parents are afraid to send their adolescent girls to school because of harassment. They are afraid that their girls might be adopted or kidnapped or even raped on their way to school. So it is important that SSD is being implemented in schools to ensure that these adolescent girls live in a safe and protected environment. We can do it together.